ethnically I identify as Tongan, Tongan Māori, but my Tongan side isn't strong. In terms of language and tikanga, and yeah, I don't really know too much. I kind of keep it at arm's length because there's, I don't know, a sense of mistrust. My dad, that's where I get my tongue inside. He left my mum when I was six months old. A lot of feeling like I missed out on a lot of things or growing up in poverty and watching my mum raise us kids by herself, thinking it'll come back and just doesn't. He doesn't really know us. My son even said that, like, like, yeah, he lives far, but a phone call's free. Like, why can't he just call? I was like, yeah, I part I put in up. Whare People get into fighting for a lot of different reasons. I started Muay Thai because I wanted to be strong. I wanted to be fit. <laughs> like I could protect myself, not to be scared of things. I was just at least Mills. I saw this hot guy <laughs> holding pads and then there was this badass lady like hitting pads. So I joined, and then turns out the hot guy was the trainer. And that's now my partner. <laughs> it was real cute, because I, I kind of knew that he liked me, and then he texted the trainer and he was like, if these odd numbers, I'll partner up with Hine. <laughs> so I used to thrive on this whole competitiveness. Being in control and being strong. And then I got a head injury. Really bad, actually. This guy pulled my neck down really, really hard and then he swept me on the ground and then my head whiplashed on the mat. My brain did a big shake and I was concussed really bad. I couldn't function, I couldn't look at screens. I was just in bed a lot of the time with headaches, massive headaches. I asked the doctor and he said that if I wanted to look after my own health and my brain, um, that he wouldn't recommend me fighting ever again or even taking any more knocks to the head. Hey, does this one likes peace. He thinks he wants it. But we haven't given it to him. Beep, beep. Tani was there, I had his support. Just seeing my Tani without Peppy. Oh. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> Like, I thank him for all the things that he does. He 
he's like, shush, man. <laughs> this is how it's meant to be. <laughs> he's just cool. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. For ages, I always thought I fit the mould of being a high school dropout because I dropped out at 16. I knew I wanted to do something in education, so I thought I'd be a teacher. When I got into uni and I saw the actual bigger issues, I knew that just teaching one class you know, it's it's not going to change anything. It's not going to change the actual problems. I know, Mama, you're pretty. I want to be a professor, so I'm teaching the university students who are going into education. With my PhD, it's figuring out how can we share our stories so that you will listen and not consume it, but you'll actually change something. Fighting in the ring gave me strength and autonomy over myself, but fighting the education system, it's more meaningful. I'm in the midst of all this mahi. There's a lot of it, but I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. My close people, they, they help me see it. That's how I know that um, I'm growing. I'm just excited. There's work to do afterwards, and, and it's positive work, it's happy stories, it's change, it's um, overcoming obstacles, it's not the sad stories, you know. It can start with sad stories, but it's what are we doing about them? It's inspiring. Like, it's all worth it. Yeah. Te a koe e e tahi feako hou, mena ka fakarere ana feako o mua. I ti horea e koe na au pehi tanga i firina ki ai ki a koe e tamo i ana i a koe e ko himu ana i to taringa he ti to mana. Engari mo te na kai tu a ke a tu, ma e nei mohi o tanga ka huri to huarahi hei huarahi fakaumu. Come on, Tommy. Come on, Tommy. Come on, Tommy. Here's my baby. Hey, Tommy. hey, Tom, Tom. Hey, Tommy. My Tom. Tommy, look at the camera, Tommy. Tommy. Hey. Hello. Growing up, I was quite a shy kid. Um, I'm naturally pretty introverted. <laughs> my dad is Cook Island. My mum's Māori. I was lucky enough to grow up around my man on my mum's side. She makes bomb feeds. Um, yeah, it's probably one of the standout things for her. Then on my dad's side, we weren't as close with my nana and papa, them being like Cook Island and us not really knowing anything about that side of us. Not only the language, but the whole tradition. We didn't learn any of that growing up. It was kind of like a disconnect in terms of like showing love and stuff like that. My parents brought us up mainly on my taha Māori. I grew up through Kura Kaupapa, Kohanga Reo. Always at the marae, doing all those kind of things. I always just called myself Māori, um, just because that's all I knew. Me pēhea tō tsuraki i o wehi, me te wete i nā here o ua ke rangiruatanga. I a koe e kawe ana i tō ake motu haketanga. Me rapu koe i te mai a ihea, kia hurumutu ai te huna, kia pohiritia ke tō kitea. Ko 
Thomas Parkoti tōku ingoa. Uh, Rotakau matahi tōku pākehe no Hire Taunga Ahau. Ko kahirāna ki te maunga, ko ngā ruroro te awa, ko tāki tume te waka, ko mihiro te marae, ko ngā te kauhungunu te iwi, ko ngā te mihiro te hapu, no te mātaua Māui Ahau. Hey, my boy. You all right? Even though I was a shy cat, I loved, you know, entertaining or, you know, making people laugh. One of my sisters would get me and my brother to just stand in front of her and she made us have a competition so you can make her laugh the hardest and we'd just be in front of her, like, dancing and being all silly. And then growing up, going through high school, I came out of my shell a bit more. Taking more opportunities to be out of my comfort zone. I decided to upload a bit more on social media, like more of myself, speaking a lot more to people that followed me. So when TikTok came around, I thought there was a good opportunity to double down on that. Tough time never lasts. Only tough people last. Don't forget to turn the potatoes off when you TikTok was just a platform to express my funny side, just personal experience stuff. Stuff people can relate to, I find does pretty well. Picked up a bit of a following, and at the moment, my most popular video is me acting like a dad. He's got the yellow hivers on, he comes in his room, and he sees his son's like having a bad day, but he's not real confident in um, comforting his son, so he's real just awkward. Hey, uh, Mum told me that they didn't have the best day today at, at school. Uh, yeah, it's no good, eh? Yeah, that has come from personal experience. Growing up, my dad would do that a lot, and I knew a lot of people would, would relate to that, so. Uh, you want a to give anyone a holiday? No, 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 no. Little behind the scenes of the old TikToks. Growing up, I was always quite a, on the bigger side, I was always quite a chubby kid. I got to high school, I had a like, little foot injury, and I just packed on a bunch of weight. I got to my heaviest, which was like 150 kgs. I was probably 16 at the time. There was just no confidence at all, just at my lowest most shy points I've ever been at um, that affected me socially, even just around my family. Kept to myself, didn't talk much. But I keep saying it to myself, you're just awkward, man, why are you so awkward? How you think others are viewing you affects your self-esteem heaps. So the definitive moment where I decided to change was around October 2016. <laughs> Having something to strive for keeps me motivated. So I dropped 50 kgs. it's really important to feel good in yourself, doing things you enjoy. I really do love making people laugh and just the feeling you get when you know you've brought some positivity to some people's day. Mā te whaiāhuru tanga i tō kere, me te tītai i nā wāhanga o u kaore i te hāngai, ka waikanai, Tō Māori. Camera is rolling. I don't think I've talked about this to anyone, let alone strangers, no offence. I'm born and raised in Porirua. I used to have panic attacks when I 
went to Wellington, the city. You get these looks of disgust. Old people, I, th I think you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> staring at me with this hate in their eyes. What the hell did I do to you? The browner your skin, the more you'll know what I'm talking about. When you experience racism, especially as a kid, you start questioning whether they're right or not. You lose all your self-esteem. You wonder why they dislike you, simply because you exist. Can you find the carrot? Yeah. Being called a, a bunger. <laughs> You did. You're a kid. You don't. You don't really know what those words mean. And when you're being called this by other kids, I don't think they really know what it means either. People running down your culture all the time makes you ashamed of it. I pare i te tirohanga a tangata ke atu. Waka moi ai te kura oroto i nā kuna whakaaro o tangata ke. Waka māana i nā koa himuhimu a ua koa uma. He aha whaka kewahi ai tō hana i te hunga whakaaro whāiti kaore i te pakumohio ki a koe. Leon Hoeva. My mum's from Te Arua, Reporoa, and my dad's from Napoli. Art, for me, is very therapeutic. The reason I wanted to study Māori art in particular, I was all about tattoos at that time in my life. Tamako, but also um, portraits. <laughs> Drawing their face, playing the music that they used to listen to. All these memories start flooding back. You're bringing them to life for a second. I think that's why I started doing tutorials. I want other people to experience that. The big thing about being an artist, a, a professional artist, is if you want to do it every day, you're gonna have to find a way to make a living from it. That's where you need to really get creative. Website that I sell art prints on, portrait commissions. I do murals for Kiwi Rail, walls along the track that gets tagged a lot. Most of my life, I struggled with anxiety. Through my teenage years and my my adult years, it was crippling for a long time. It was tough to get out of bed. It was tough to do anything. I was self-medicating. That first sip would calm me down. But the problem with that is now you have to keep drinking because if you stop, the benefits stop. It got to a point where it wasn't fun. But 
I went and I only had one session of therapy and my anxiety was gone. I didn't have the need to drink again. And, but, I, I didn't. I, I just stopped. I realised then, who cares if they don't like the look of you? They don't know you. I don't want to sound like, oh, you know, quit drinking, your life will be amazing. It, you know, might not, but but for me anyway, the, the amount of time that I have to do a lot of things that I talked about doing, you know, when I was drunk, and now I can actually do it. Spending time with my kids every day. Having a constant mood. I don't have to rely on anything to make me feel good. I just, I'm appreciative of what I do have. My health. I'm not laid over the toilet every morning. <laughs> yeah, for, for me, it, it, it was definitely the best, best thing I've ever done. Whakawātea i a koe anō nā whakawhiu a tangata kē atu. Ka tahi koe ka kite, kaore o rātou whakaaro e whakāta i a koe. Kaore o pānga ki a waiake, kaore e kite i tōmura. Mā tēnei māramatanga ka tiu tō hinengaro me te wairua. Mā tēnei māramatanga ka tiu tō hinengaro me te wairua.